So the rhythm and measure one's pretty simple, four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And I start with clapping. You might want to do two fingers instead of four, so you save a little bit of abuse on your hands. Here's the second measure. One, two, three, and four. Here's the third measure. One, two, three, and. And of course, the whole note is a single hit, one that lasts four counts. All right, here's the first four measures with music in it, when they're rhythms. Ready, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and. One, two, three, four. After I feel good clapping, tapping, snapping, saying all of these rhythms, I put it on an open string. Any string will do. Let's start with A. One, two, here's the rhythm. Let's do it on the D string. I'm going to count out loud this time while I play. do just the left hand in rhythm. One, two, three, two, B, C, D, D, C, B, C, D, C, B, before I add the, the bow. I might even take one more step and do it pizzicato first, with or without the bow in your hand, whatever you feel comfortable with. And this really helps teach your fingers about when it needs to be quick and changing notes or when it just needs to be normal and changing notes. When I say normal, I'm meaning quarter notes. All right, here's it all put together. First four measures, south side blues. Next four measures is the same rhythm, just on the D string, same fingers too. The next four measures uses some of the same rhythms, just on different notes. Notice I needed to do a bow circle there. At circle one, it begins down bow. This whole section has bow circles. I usually wait until my kids get into lessons to teach them exactly where they are and have the students write them in. If you're watching this at home and you have your music with you, please write in a bow circle for every time my bow does a lift. Some people call it a lift or a retake as well. Those are all correct words. They all mean basically the same thing. I like saying bow circle because it also describes the shape I want to make in the air. Small circles for quick movements, bigger circles for more space. Here's circle one in Southside Blues continuing. Circle two is the same thing as the very beginning. Note for note, rhythm for rhythm, everything is exactly the same. From here to the end, it's very similar. Excuse me, it's exactly the same as the next four measures at the beginning of this piece. So really, if you learn all of the music from the very beginning up to circle two, you know the music from circle two to the very end. And this piece becomes a lot more manageable when you see that. Good luck and have fun with this one. French folk song. We have come to the piece that we use so many great warm-ups, or at least I hope they were great for you, uh, to get us ready. Now, this is one of our first pieces that we get to teach 
to our fifth graders, where people have different parts. They're not the same notes exactly. So for example, in the beginning of this piece, the violins are playing what's called the melody. That's just the beginning of the melody. But we viola players and second violin parts have a different set of notes. And this part is called the harmony. We are harmonizing with our neighbors in the first violin section. Um, I think this makes music richer and more beautiful. And it's part of what it means to be a viola player a lot of the time. We're playing a harmony part that's not the melody. Now there are some really great uh, moments in music history where we get to play the melody, we get to take over it and show, show people how viola can be just incredible with this rich, deep, beautiful instrument. So part of it is knowing, knowing our role and then knowing how we can step out of our role from time to time too. So in the beginning of French Folk Song, we start on F sharp, and here's our part. Um, I'm going to play through the entire French Folk Song so you can play with me if you'd like. One, two, three, one, ready. the little scales I made for French folk song warm-ups came from the viola part. Measure C, for example, the little noodle. Measure D, the skip figure. Da, a skip, a back. The same thing at letter I to the end. The thing is, I will be making a video where we can hear the sound of the melody and the viola part together. So you can see what it's like to have harmony or not harmony. What I like about playing the harmony part, even though it's not the melody, is that I can live the melody by playing my line very well. And that support of my part working with the melody part is joy for me in almost the same way that playing the melody is. So, as my teacher Mary Lou Rounds used to say to me, live your part through their line. So if you're going to play your harmony part, my viola players and second violin players, make sure you're also thinking of what the melody is doing. Continuing and thinking about playing the harmony in French folk song. This actually makes it more challenging to be the harmony part, because not only do we have to know our part and play it well, we have to be able to know when we're making, uh, making good music and syncing up with the violin part. That means we're kind of playing two parts at once, and that makes it quite the challenge. You can do it, and that's what makes us awesome. Mars Walk. We begin with the tremolo that we learned in the warm-up, and now the tremolos also have accents. So we're gonna give it a little bit of speed and power at the very top uh, beginning of the note. And so on. Now, when we get to the measure right before B, we have a low one now for the first time. And so that's a new note that happens between where our first finger first started playing and the nut of the instrument. So here's the first finger placement, and then here is our low one placement for B flat, right before letter B. And this is the, the nut on the instrument. So here's letter B through letter C. Letter B.
then the music has the direction bows on stand. It just means put your bow down on the stand. If you are with a stand partner, have your frog on your side of the stand and their frog on the other side so the bows don't get mixed up. Circle D changes to pizzicato and all of our Fs are no longer sharp. They're natural. So now we have another new note. This one is between where two used to go and our new place close to the first finger. This is called F natural. Here's the part starting at letter D to letter F. The slur means let it ring into the rest. just got to letter F, but first I want to talk about being careful not to let the side of your hand accidentally keep the A string from vibrating like I just did. Now at F it says pick up your bows and we have two whole measures to get that done. And then it is basically the same as the beginning all the way from there through letter G and letter H. Notice on the last measure there's a decrescendo, so the last measure should have a character like this. almost vanishing into a mist. I hope you've been able to see some of the new footage and pictures from the Red Planet. We've got quite a, quite a wealth of information and media to watch. I hope you check out A Blue Sunset too. Maybe that'll give you inspiration for playing this. Stand up, sit down, rock, rock, rock. I'm gonna start in the middle of the piece rather than the beginning. The beginning has a lot more uh, tricky moments to it that I'll explain in a moment. But let's begin it. Uh, two quarter notes before 18. And you want to use a whole bow on the quarter notes, especially the one in 18, so you get to the tip, just like it says in the, in the uh, uh, word there above the, the first eighth notes there. The MB there means middle bow. All right, one, two. our low two again. Notice that those eighth notes had a lot more energy going into them. Each one of them has a little symbol like this, which is an accent, not a decrescendo, because they're really tiny and they're each attached to a single note. An accent, remember, is a burst of power and speed at the beginning of the bow, and since they're already quick notes, a normal note might sound like this. But this measure, this section is marked accented, so every note needs to have a little more emphasis, a little more oomph. And right where that happens is here in the index finger, a little bit of nooch into the string. And so here's a great way to practice it. And the motion is very much like pouring out a glass of water or if you want to get technical, the pronation of the wrist. You can also practice it this way. I call it bow flexing. If that feels too fast, start slow and get fast later. Now let's go to the beginning. In the section marked Andante Religioso, on the top, it's supposed to have a feeling like we're in a somber church service, whatever the de denomination. Underneath, it says Bentenuto, which is the Italian for uh, full value on all of the notes. Each note we play as full and connected as we can. So here's a playthrough, and then I'll explain. One, two, three. We 
say stand up, sit down, rock, rock, rock. Now back to the beginning. Measure four, we have our slur. Up, down, up. Measure five, we have that low two again to play here. And then moving it up to F sharp. I really like the sound of that measure. So I practice it measure five and six together quite often. Low two, slide it up. Just a fun. Now, unless your teacher asks for it, be careful not to play it this way. That's where your finger slides up while your bow is still moving on that up bow from the end of measure five. Your teacher may not want to hear that slurp or slide of your finger. Or maybe they'll ask for it. And then another D crescendo there. At the very ending of this piece, it's important to know what the other sections in the orchestra are doing. So when you look at measure 64, you see it says viola stand. And in that measure, the cello players are already standing and they're playing on their D string. D, 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 D. And then the violins play, and that's the end of the piece. But just knowing where you should go helps you be ready. So when you see the cello players stand up, you know you're next. They stand up, and then they play their eighth notes. When they're playing their eighth notes, we stand up and get ready and play our F sharps. So cello, da, 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 violas. You see our violins get up. accents again. Make sure you put some passion into the end of that piece because the dynamic right now is fortissimo, which means very loud. Have fun with this one. It's certainly a favorite of mine.